Hello friends. In this session, we will see what are the different electrical conducting materials. Also, we will see what are their properties and where do we use them. Let us begin. Yes, dear. So now if you just look up to, you know, electrical conducting materials, let us understand what does that mean. Electrical conducting materials means those are those materials yes those materials which are electrical conductors what do you mean by electrical conductors which means definitely those materials through which electric current can flow electric current can flow is that right electric current flows yes but now if you check out there are basically two groups of these materials two big groups what are they one is high conductivity materials and other one is high resistivity materials now yes if you check out these high conductivity materials they are used where sir they are used they are basically used in making windings of the machines where they are used windings of machines why we will understand it very soon okay no problem and if you check out these high resistivity materials they are used to make the resistances or we can say the heating devices resistances etc this is what is their work now we will try to check them out one by one and then try to understand what does that mean okay now the very first thing we will see is we will see is what are the different properties that a high conductivity material should have let us see those let us talk about high conductivity materials first okay so high conductivity materials yes if you check out the first important property or the first important requirement which has to be satisfied is what it is it is to have highest possible conductivity means what maximum a conductivity that it can have maximum 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 okay then the next property it should have is what it should have least possible temperature coefficient of resistance least possible temperature coefficient why sir if you know if you know if you know what do we mean by temperature coefficient here see whenever temperature increases what happens for some material the length increases is that right yes now if we check out r what is r r is nothing but the resistance correct if we check out this r is nothing but equal to rho rho l by a right now whenever temperature increases if the length is increased if the length is also increased what do you see you see that the resistance of that particular material has been increased is that right yes so if you check out now we want what we want highest possible conductivity which means i want lowest resistance as possible lowest resistance as possible which means which means which means i should have those materials for which even if my temperature has increased resistance should not increase resistance should not increase so such things are called as you know least possible temperature coefficient because see temperature can increase temperature can decrease also that is definitely that is not in our hands right but whether my material is susceptible to it or not that we can definitely think of is that correct yes so if you just see least possible temperature coefficient is also a very very important point now the next one is what sir next one is mechanical strength has to be more mechanical strength has to be more why so brother i will write more 
why so because if you check out we have all the electrical materials right just imagine if it is brittle what will happen it can break easily right it can break easily which means it is not advisable so the important thing is that mechanical strength has to be more then next one next is what sir next is it should have least corrosion what is that sir if you just see whenever for example if i talk about metals right what actually happens is over the years because of aging and all what happens is on the layer of the metals you find oxidation you find oxidation reaction happening which leads to what corrosion so the property is what you should have least corrosion getting my point yes now we will try to talk about materials one by one which are high conductivity materials let us talk about them one by one cdo the first material we will talk about the high conductivity materials the first one we talk about is copper very important and very very useful why i will tell you cdo most of our electrical machines employ the windings of anhydride high conductivity copper okay or we can say that you know international annihilated let me tell you what is that meaning i will explain don't worry yes it is a standard according to which we are supposed to select the copper now if you just check out the international standard says that its resistivity of this particular copper resistivity that is rho we can say is nothing but equal to 0.017241 into 10 to the power minus 6 ohms which is very very less right which is very very less ohm meter by the way now the temperature coefficient temperature coefficient or we say that as alpha also right to check out that is how much according to international annihilated copper standard it is equal to what it is equal to 0.00393 per degree celsius and its strength rather the tensile strength when we talk about is equal to what is equal to almost around 220 to 250 mega newton per meter squared getting my point yes this is newton per meter squared if you think of it is same as what it is same as pressure unit of pressure right because it is again force per meter square is that right yes force per unit area right so if you think of this particular tensile strength is also 220 to 250 mega newton per meter square is that correct yes now if you think of hard drawn copper wires hard drawn copper wires where are they used what is the meaning that is understand yes if you see they are used for wire drawing purposes wire drawing purposes because of which what happens here is sir because of which what happens is its strength increases its strength increases its strength which strength definitely mechanical strength increases but one small disadvantage is what its resistivity also increases but only small value no problem sir very very small value is that right now we will try to see some more about copper see now see copper which is there copper is universally used for electrical machine windings why because there is no possibility of fracture okay that is the important important reason so universally universally in the sense everywhere all around the world this particular material that is copper is used to make windings right to make windings very important now we will talk about one more material second material is aluminium see for example you have got a machine right 
let us say machine one and let us say you have got one more machine let us let me call it machine two for example if this machine one has a winding made up of copper let us say copper okay and this particular machine two has winding made up of aluminium correct yes so what actually happens is what actually happens is if we check out what happens the machine which is having copper winding means this one yes if example its current density j is let us say equal to 1 ampere okay example example for example then the same machine if i employ this aluminium then the current density is going to be 0 0.78 times of copper which means 0 0.78 into 1 getting my point which means what what here yes which means what has happened here definitely definitely earlier if it was 1 ampere now it is going to be 0 0.78 ampere right which means what has happened now definitely the current density has been reduced correct yes now because of this what happens is what happens is if you check out if you do 100 minus 78 what you get here you got 22 percent right so this 22 percent this is the reason what happens is you know machine rating also reduces machine rating also reduces by 22 percent this is a very very important thing reduces by 22 percent is that correct yes now let us see now this particular aluminium it is used where sir it is used in foil type windings used in foil type winding is that correct yes now we will try to see some more elements what are they iron and steel what is that this iron and steel which is there it is used where it is used in starter circuits what is starter if you remember if you remember for example you have a motor right if you are supposed to start a motor what do you do then you basically apply it some voltage right voltage across it is that right yes but then you have seen that the back emf of this particular motor will be zero when eb for example it is going to be zero when at starting correct at starting it is equal to zero now what happens here is because it is equal to zero at starting heavy current will flow current flows through the machine right is it advisable no that is the reason that is the reason we have something called a starter which we place here we have something called a starter which we place here so in such starters we use this iron and steel materials getting my point in order to make the starter rheostats rather to be very specific the starter rheostats use the same now there are a few alloys also what are they alloys of copper there are a few alloys of copper let us talk about them yes. for example they are nothing but bronze then we have beryllium copper then we have cadmium copper then we have brass and we have what do you say copper silver alloy so if you check out these are all what these are all again alloys of copper which is definitely they can also be used for what high conducting materials applications right now if you think of here these alloys alloys if you see their mechanical strength is high their mechanical strength is high that is the reason we prefer alloys as well at times definitely some other properties like for example if you talk about resistivity it may increase yes but then in such applications where you actually need more mechanical strength you may use those alloys getting my point so in depending upon the applications we can basically change the operation is that correct they are application oriented right now let us talk about materials of high resistivity what are those yes 
so if you check out materials of high resistivity they are what they are basically alloys they are basically alloys of different metals first thing then you may ask me what are those metals different right those are nothing but nickel silver and iron correct now the first thing we need to understand is why are they used they are used in precision measuring instruments second is what they are used in making rheostats and the third one is what they are used in making electric furnaces or heating devices yes so if you check out these are all those electrical conducting materials right if you check out you have this first one which is materials of high resistivity and then we have also seen the what do you say high conductivity materials right so yes so we have seen what are the different different types of electrical conducting materials right we have seen the high conductivity materials as well as we have seen the high resistivity materials along with their applications and their properties thank you